Welcome to the Mommy Zen Podcast with Marianne Clyde. Hi, this is Marianne Clyde, and welcome to another episode of the podcast, Mommy Zen. The affirmation for today is, I am calm and centered no matter what is happening around me. And to help me talk about that topic today is Michelle Kelly, a licensed counselor and founder of Girls Stand Strong. Michelle, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. I am so glad to have you today because Girls Stand Strong is such a huge, impactful organization in our community. Can you tell us how it started? Absolutely. Girls Stand Strong is an organization which I created several years ago to help educate and empower girls in today's world with today's challenges. It and and you, you were in, in a practice before with, with a bunch of other therapists doing yes. general counseling. Yes. And from what I understand, you found out that Girls Stand Strong was, well, your emphasis was not just girls, but women also, right? Absolutely. It was a passion that just evolved for me. I started seeing a theme in working with girls and women, a theme where girls were really, and women were really struggling with self-esteem issues and lack of confidence. And I really wanted to hone in on this issue and help them build their self-esteem. And it's such an important thing these days, because you and I were talking a little bit um, the other day about bullying yes. and how bullying is such a huge problem with you got bullying on Facebook, on the internet, in person, you know, and, and I notice with my clients too, I hear it all the time that it's, I don't know if it didn't happen when we were kids as much or if it's more broadly available now that there are more, more modes of bullying like right, internet and so faces. forth. But, but when I said, will you come on and talk about bullying, you said, yeah, I'll talk about bullying, but you wanted to expand it a little bit. Absolutely. Why, why not just bullying? Bullying is a really broad topic. Yeah. And it's comprised of various types of bad behavior. Earlier you asked the question, is this new? Has this been going on for a long time? Yeah. It's been going on forever. Right. Bullying is really about one person overpowering another person. And this has been in existence forever. Recently, it's gotten a lot of media attention mm -hmm. as it's become clear that there are far-reaching emotional effects of bullying. I'm very glad that there's been a lot of media attention and talk, especially in the schools, about bullying because it brings an awareness to this very important topic. The reason that I don't talk just about bullying anymore mm -hmm. and I break it down to different various types of bad behavior is because we need to be looking at the, the specific behaviors that are going on in a relationship. So when I work with a girl and maybe she's identified that she's being bullied, what I do is I help her to break down specifically what she's experiencing. It can, can you give me some examples of what they would tell you? Absolutely. Like, you know, what are, what are the types of bullying that girls experience? Absolutely. Typical for a girl might be feeling left out, being um, isolated from her group of peers, being picked on, but in very subtle ways. The bully of today subtle, is yeah. different. Subtle, like, what do you mean? Um, with a girl, it can almost be um, two girls talking and snickering and looking at another one, and then the one girl who feels like she's being targeted is experiencing a whole range of emotions, and she feels um, bad, she feels blamed, she feels responsible for what's going on, mm -hmm. and her mind goes crazy with um, what somebody else is thinking about her. Yeah. Okay, so they have these subtle things that they do. What might happen on Facebook? What, what might a, an attack on Facebook look like? Well, Facebook is just one example where you've got a lot of different people talking and thinking out loud. And girls... <laughs> Sometimes people way talk out loud too right, often. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And they don't have that filter. Right. And they feel a little bit more maybe anonymous or empowered, or they feel that they don't need to have that filter when they're using social media or yeah. texting. So they can say things not realizing the impact 
on another person because they can't see the facial expressions of the other person. Just, or they might be talking in a group to one person about someone else, not realizing the effect that that's going to have on the other person they're talking about. So it's easier to be thoughtless and mean Absolutely. and not experience yeah. the consequences. Absolutely. Uh, is there a lot of problem with texting and things like that? Or do, do they use it that way as well? They do. And Just sometimes nasty it's little intentionally messages. and sometimes it's unintentionally. That's why when I work with parents, I always um, encourage them to be a part of their child's world when it involves technology. Because mm -hmm. the earlier you start, the better uh, chance is that the parent can intervene in situations and help guide their child to make better decisions or to see how their actions or their words might impact somebody else. Today, okay. I see a lot of group text, texting going on. Okay. And a situation like that, two people can have a conversation and then three people can be listening in and messages get mixed up and um, personalized and mm -hmm. all kinds of problems can arise from a situation like oh, that if well, that's a good someone's point not too. watching. Okay, so, so do you have a couple points for moms about how they can monitor without hovering? Yeah, that's a great question how to monitor without hovering. Yeah, and this Monitoring is not just for girls, but this is for absolutely, any parent, absolutely. Any kid. Right, being in touch with what your child is doing, whether it involves technology or not, is very important. Mm -hmm. The sooner a parent can get involved and stay connected with their child, the better. Yeah. So if you have a teen who's getting into trouble with technology, it's very difficult to have a parent kind of come in there and try and deal with the situation at age 16 or 17. So when they hadn't monitored right, when they were right. 13. But when a child is just being introduced into the world of technology is when a parent should say, all right, this is a privilege, not a right, and with this privilege comes responsibility mm -hmm. and to help teach the child the rules and the responsibilities and to let the child know that they are going to be involved and watching more so in the beginning mm -hmm. and as a child gets older and earns a parent's trust mm -hmm. then the parent can kind of be a little more hands-off but still stay connected. Okay so here's a question what if you rather than being the victim the mother of the victim mm -hmm. what if you find out you're the mother of the bully mm -hmm. how do you have a couple of bits of advice for moms of bullies absolutely rather than denial absolutely most of the time what i find is that a parent doesn't even realize that their child is doing this right that they have their own blinders on mm -hmm. or they don't see it right so it's not necessarily again i don't encourage anyone to look at their child or any child as a bully a child might be exhibiting bullying behavior, behaviors, right. right? Because if a child feels labeled in that way, that's really going to affect them negatively. Mm -hmm. So again, what you want to do is help your child realize that possibly they are acting in ways that are hurtful to other people mm -hmm. and ask them, have a conversation with them and ask them if they've ever experienced that. Because really what you want to do with your child is to help them develop a sense of awareness as to everything that's going on in their friendships and in their world. That means most of us have played different parts in all of our relationships where we've been felt like a victim or maybe we've treated someone else unfairly. This right. is human nature and girls need to know it's okay to experience a range of emotions, especially right. in our relationships. Right. And so what I heard you say, I think too, is it's important to get the, the person who's exhibiting the bullying behavior to to think about how would it feel empathy if, absolutely. if somebody else was doing that to them. Would absolutely. you like that? Would that feel good to you? And offer them options. What, absolutely. How, how could you have said that better? Mm -hmm. um, this starts how, in the how family too. To, yeah. When a parent is noticing um, between their children how they're interacting and talking, that's the time for a parent to intervene and say, wait a minute, did you hear how you just spoke to your sister? How did that come Great across? Yep. And to the, to the sibling, how did that make you feel? Yeah. Well, how could you have said that differently? To yeah. start having these conversations in the family is where it begins. Right, because this doesn't happen just like all of right. a sudden at right. school, your kid becomes somebody who abuses other kids. Exactly. So what we do in the home, I, I always often say that more is caught than taught. Yes. You know, so rather than preaching to our kids all the time, we need to 
set that example. Absolutely. And like you said, bring it up around, you know, the the living room when we're when we're actually interacting. And when we siblings. set that example, we live by example. That means we as parents need to own it when we say something that we are we're not proud of. Or and when so we we've snapped a, at our kids. Right. And I do that with my kids all the time. I will say, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I didn't like the way that came out. Right. And we'll have a conversation about it. Right. Because and, I'm human too. And there's nothing wrong with being right. human. We we all are. Right. Oh. Michelle, thank you for sharing that with me. You're really welcome. Really appreciate that. It really fits right into our our um, affirmation for today to teach our kids how to be calm and centered in the midst of whatever. So yeah. thank you for joining me. Thank you. And thank you for joining me today. And now remember, our affirmation for today is I am calm and centered no matter what is happening around me. This is Mary Ann Clyde with Mommy Zen Podcast. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the Mommy Zen Podcast. For nuggets of encouragement and strength throughout your day, follow Marianne on Twitter at mommy underscore zen and Facebook at facebook.com slash mommy just breathe. Also, you can join our mailing list, leave comments, or ask questions by visiting mommy-zen.com.